Cementerio General de Dilao is a recreational garden and was once Manila's municipal cemetery built by the Dominicans during the Spanish colonial period. It is located on General Luna Street and at the east end of Padre Faure Street in Paco, Manila, Philippines. Paco Park was originally planned as a municipal cemetery for the well-off and established aristocratic Spanish families who resided in the old Manila or the city within the walls of Intermuros during the Spanish colonial era. Most of the wealthy families interred the remains of their loved ones inside the municipal cemetery in what was once the district of Dilao, former name for Paco. The cemetery was built in the late 18th century but was completed several decades later and in 1822, the cemetery was used to inter victims of a cholera epidemic that swept across the city. During the Second World War, Japanese forces used Paco Park as a central supply and ammunition depot. The high thick adobe walls around the park were ideal for defensive positions of the Japanese. The Japanese, just before the liberation of Manila in 1945, dug several trenches and pillboxes around and within the park with three 75mm guns to defend their fortification against the charging 148th Infantry Regiment of the 1st Battalion of the United States Army and the Philippine Commonwealth Army. So I am Ildefonso Paez Santos Jr. I graduated architecture in University of Santa Tomas. And in 1988, I was awarded Patnubay ng Kalinangan. My famous artwork or my famous artworks are parks. Going back, one of my early designs is the Loyola Memorial Park in Marikina. Then I was commissioned to revive the Paco Park in Manila. I incorporate natural elements into a design. I do not overshadow the natural beauty of a site, thus also maximizing the space. My work is considered contemporary because it shows modern Filipino architecture evolved in increasingly well-designed landscapes and urban scapes. the three questions given to me for the number one question my um, my famous artworks for over 39 years are the cultural center of the Philippines the Bong Arts Theater and the Philippine International Convention Center the form of my artwork is Renaissance and as you can see from them or from my artwork rather I'm more on I'm more on focus in the simplicity of the design, the use of concrete and the floating volumes. For the last question, because as seen on my artworks, I featured the issue during that time. In the time of um, eight pres president president uh, Ferdinand Marcos. And also, it features the resourcefulness of being a Filipino, of a Filipino artist rather. So that's it.
is a rice furnace. The style I use impressionism, luminism, and realism regarding the elements of race politics. I am also privileged to honor the National Artist Award, composed of over 10,000 paintings and even more sketches and drawings. My works are considered as cultural treasure, a uh, true color reflection of the 20th century. It is often portrayed by traditional Philippine cultural astronomers and culture and occupation. Sorry for the inconvenience by Manny Motley Bono. I would describe the element and style of the art as balance and a modern form of art. It is considered a contemporary art because it shows the political and religious issues we are experiencing in the country. Here, there, everywhere by Alfredo and Isabel Aquilizen. the art provides an opportunity to reflect on contemporary society and the issues relevant to ourselves and the world around us. Terra Incognita, etc. by Tintin Wulia. considered a contemporary art because the art reflects the events when colonial imperatives directed global affairs and provides an opportunity to reflect on contemporary society and the issues relevant now. University of the Philippines Las Banas University Library by Edwin Copeland. I would describe the element and style of the art as timeless and classic, at the same time modern in its designed architecture. It is considered contemporary art because it reflects the complex issues that shape our diverse, global, and rapidly changing world. Through the work of art, many contemporary arts explore personal or cultural identity, offer critics of social and institutional structures, or even attempt to redefine art itself. Art is a way of expressing one's feelings and a form of telling a story through creating something out of one's imagination. While contemporary means belonging to or occurring in the present, therefore, with the knowledge and insights taught to us during this quarter, Filipino artists made Philippine contemporary art the way of storytelling their different point of views and stories regarding the development and evolution of the lifestyle here in the Philippines. Some have presented it through illustrating the beauty of the Philippines landscapes and nature. But the one category that stood out among all is the acknowledgement of Filipino roots and lifestyle by using native and indigenous materials in the artworks produced which shows growing sense of pride in being Filipino. An example of which is Fernando Amorsolo's works that usually depicts the typical Filipino farm life, the beauty of the Philippine countryside, the honor of work, and lastly the importance and elegance of women. While the Sante Manansala's paintings are described as visions of reality fluttering on the edge of abstraction, he focused on portraying the street life of the poor. Thus, 
Philippine contemporary art had been influenced by the world's domain of influence such as the Renaissance, Baroque and modern periods through the colonizers who arrived in the country in which many Filipino artists became adherents of the modernist style. Maybe it gives a different perspective and appreciation to a person as compared to other kinds of arts. However, it is very much alive, accepted, cherished and being patronized in the country especially by our advocates. Oh, 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 oh,